Hello, beautiful architects, visionary leaders, land stewards who are here to birth the temples, the healing sanctuaries of our new earth, of our future. I'm in a uh, space of reflection as we enter into the darkest days of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. We are approaching December 21st, the winter solstice, 21st, 22nd. And I am reflecting on my uh, three plus years going full force in the Sacred Blueprint mission. I have birthed the Sacred Blueprint uh, many years before this, but I've been full on for the past three years in, in this, in shifting, revolutionizing the way we practice architecture, the way we practice design um, to be, to become a, a modality, a practice that is much more heart-centered, heart-centered, um, in tune with nature, in tune with our intuition, and um, in tune with spirit and, and energy. And I have realized that my journey, my mission is a lot bigger and more meaningful than I initially knew it was. And as we are faced with many challenges on this planet, which are, are a result of forces that are present in the on the planet that are wanting to rip us away from our humanity, disconnect us from nature, disconnect us from the wisdom uh, that resides within us, right? So that we become dependent on external, um, authorities. Now, uh, it doesn't, I'm not suggesting that everyone should go off and rebel from your te you know, rebel from your teacher, rebel from your parents, rebel, rebel, rebel. And, and that, you know, <laughs> we, we, uh, we start some kind of anarchy. Uh, I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about a, uh, coming back to the nature within ourselves coming back to the wisdom that resides within us to build the future, build the new world. And we are in a, as, as women architects and designers who hear the call to be the torch carriers for nature, be the torch carriers for spirit and energy and our goddess voice. Goddess voices. It is increasingly important that we speak up through our creations, through our designs. And bring about a new way that helps to build the beacons of light, the temples of light that we so need right now on this planet. There is war, there is um, abuse, there is depression, there is confusion especially amongst our children. There is a dependency on drugs, alcohol, and there is a dependency and an addiction to the digital world. While the digital world is facilitating this podcast and uh, te technology is, is enabling me to broadcast my message out into the world. 
I don't let it take over me and I don't let it control me, control my thoughts, control my actions and deplete me of energy. I have experienced that and I'd sometimes go through my waves when I have some, you know, uh, you know, two or three intense days of working in front of the computer on my business, on the systems with my team. And then I'm just like, okay, gotta, gotta, gotta check, close the, close the lid, close the lid of the laptop and, and get outside and ground, take off my shoes, take off my socks and uh, connect with, with the earth. When we connect with the earth, the land, we are really connecting with ourselves. Humanity is deeply connected to the, the, the humanity's evolution, rather, is deeply connected to the evolution of this earth. And we are, we are evolving hand in hand. The more we come into union with the earth through our creations, through our ways of being, the more we are able to receive the answers with laser precision and ease. I've been just overjoyed with how much terrain my clients are crossing both clients who are uh, women architects and designers that I'm mentoring, as well as my uh, design clients who are land stewards. And we're just experiencing the most incredible ahas, breakthroughs they are, and receiving visions about their next steps, whether it be about a new design modality that they're birthing, uh, a business that they want to to birth or uh, or receiving a vision for their property. When we co-create with the spirit of the land, when we co-create with our intuition as well and our imagination, we access a realm where all the blueprints, come together where all the blueprints that you need for your next steps are accessible with ease. And to in order to do this, there are some steps, preparation steps to get into a state of being, a state of experiencing, a state of listening to access that realm. Imagine if the mayors of cities worked in this way. Imagine if the leaders of big developing companies worked in this way, worked with their teams to vision and connect and acknowledge the land in order to receive the best vision for a big urban plan, a project for the city. And more. The sacred blueprint system that I birthed, as I mentioned earlier, many years ago, um, is about a remembering of how we once were in deep union with nature, in deep communion with her. We treated her like a living being, someone to consult, right? Someone to uh, so a uh, being to 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 get advice from, to listen to. 
to co-create with. And it brings back the awareness that the subtle realms do exist, that there is more to us than our physical bodies. There is more to us than just materiality. There is more to us than, um, there's something about the digital realm that wants to come through, but I can't quite explain it. You know, we're not just mere image. There are so many people who are trying to make the digital realm a reality. Uh, yes, tech, technology is a reality, uh, but they're, yeah, they're creating worlds that are digital that people will, res you know, spend most of their time in rather than spend time with the elements outside. I haven't tried those realms, so I can't be a judge of them, but there's something that's off. Something that, that's not right about that. So the sacred blueprint system is about a coming home back to our nature. And it helps architects, land stewards, property owners, people who are visioning um, to build a new community. Maybe, you know, a lot of the people who have joined the course that um, that is based on the sacred blueprint system, um, you know, don't even have land. And they're wanting to anchor in a blueprint for their community or their spiritual center or uh, um, an art park. There was one, yeah, I remember there was one course participant who was wanting to do something like that. So um, what I'm what I'm seeing right now as I share this with you is that it's bringing back the part of us that we have missed for so long, that's been in hiding for so long. And that is actually the the gift of the feminine of the intuition, of the spirit, of the unseen realms. And if humanity continues to ignore that realm, which is the realm that is uh, responsible uh, for creating the blueprints of nature, creating trees, rocks, plants, um the physical reality that we now exist in that we exist in that we live in we reside in if we ignore that realm then we're always going to end up building something out of whack out of balance now some people intuitively are able to connect with it and they don't know they can't really bring words to it so I'm not suggesting that all architects or designers need to use the language of spirit, energy, and, you know, everyone finds their own way. That said, I'm speaking to the women architects and designers who are here to open up their voice and to stop hiding and to stop, um, you know, kind of packaging uh, covering up the work that they're really wanting to do for their clients, right? So I'm encouraging you to actually be bold, cross the threshold, and, and start speaking about energy and spirit with your clients. Um, there may be some clients who are really not open to that, so I leave that to you to to gauge whether or not it's a good time for that um and i encourage you to start attracting clients that are interested in working in a more with a more spiritual a spiritual approach not more a spiritual approach energetic approach it's incredible what magic occurs and unfolds when you do So, 
yeah, bringing back this, this missing piece that's been hiding for so long. And we see this in, um, come to expression in, for example, the nature spirits. And for the last, I don't know, couple hundred years or maybe even longer, I, I don't know. Uh, but for, for a pretty long time, they've been in hiding. And because the stories and the legends and the 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 cultures that use that would keep them alive in their stories right in their folk folk stories um have you know stopped uh sharing these stories with uh their communities and when those stories are being are stopped being told when they're not being told anymore then um, they get forgotten about the nature spirits. Um, and it's time to, to bring the, the story back, but in a contemporary way, in a super contemporary way, and also in a way that keeps the human being at the center we are increasingly gaining the capacity to guide ourselves. Yes, we have angels who support us. Yes, we have light beings who support us. Yes, God supports us. Yes, the nature spirits and Mother Earth support us. We can co-create with them. But there's this uh, increasing mer merging occurring especially with the ones who are awakened, who are um, aware of these realms, who really care about this planet. And um, yeah, who, who's, who are interested in, in, in uh, spiritual wisdom. Um, there is a, a merging going on, like imagine, just picture that the angels and the nature spirits and Mother Gaia and the stars and all the elements on the earth, the mountains, the rivers, the trees. In fact, they are all expression of us, the animals. They are all an expression the human being to taking that big image instead of the human being separate from nature oh look at what humans have done oh my goodness right separate from animals I mean some say yeah okay um, let, let me let me stick to this this image here taking that big picture image and tuning in to this truth, actually, this truth that the elements, the animals, the stars, the earth, the sky, the cosmos, the angels, the ascended masters, the formless ones, the inner earth, Gaia. They are all a part of the architecture of us and they mirror us. We are such a great mystery. And we have the power through our word to speak life into form. We have the power through our will to enact, to create, to design. to make things that 
nature is not making. So there's a paradox there. And yet we are nature. Some say we are gods in human form. The Neters, the Neteru of the ancient Egyptian pantheon are all expressions of God as well as expressions of us. And so when you bring this wisdom into your being, then it becomes increasingly more important and urgent for you to carry that torch for nature, carry that torch of this deeper knowledge, this deeper knowledge that we are the cosmos, we are the earth, and all of the beings, supportive beings, spirit guides that are involved in, in crafting it, protecting it, maintaining it, ensuring that it keeps evolving. And when it comes to architecture, while these themes and these impulses and these knowings um, don't all need to be brought in as a concept into every single project you do, it's more about, are you, are you embodying that spirit? Are you embodying the, the great architecture that is you? The great architecture of the cosmos, of the earth that is you as an architect? And how can you teach your clients how to embody that as well so that they get to connect with the land, connect with their home, connect with their garden at this level so that they get to be the leaders and the creators of their own project. How nourishing is that? How self-empowering is that? So the sacred blueprint system that I developed is, is one of those ways. It, it guides my clients through this deep intuitive uh, approach that helps them to deeply connect with the land, helps them to birth a blueprint for their property that fits just right on the land, right on that sweet spot or sweet spots, depending on what kind of project it is and how many buildings and spaces there are. And um, yeah, I was just sharing with a, a private client today and we were laughing about it that the I get, get my clients to draw the first drawing. And we're laughing because it's like, oh, as architects, we've been like, we've been doing all the drawing for so long, so many years. We're just drawing, 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 drawing and overworking ourselves. And it's like, oh, maybe we don't need to draw anymore. Um, but we do, of course, uh, to, to bring the beauty, the calibration, the, 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 refinements to the project but I get my clients to to sketch the first sketch most of the time I would say 90 percent of the time you know there's always room for uh, a new way depending on the client but uh, I would say 90 percent of the time I get my clients to sketch the first sketch so and it's just so great to to witness and watch what once you set them up for set them up with the right container, the right energetic container that helps them to really go within 
and tune into their soul's purpose and partner with the spirit of the land, listen to the spirit of the land. And with that merging, that union, uh, an amazing work comes through. And it doesn't have to be perfect. They don't need to be artists. They don't need to be drawing everything correctly, right? But we get the first essence, the first taste of the project. It's just, it's so fun. We need to bring more fun into our lives, women. More fun, more joy. They're, again, stepping back and looking at what the, what's occurring in the world right now. These forces are deliberately trying to pull us away from our fun and put us in pain and increase the pain body of the world. Was it, uh, oh God, the power of now? Was it the power of now? Oh, what's his name? Maybe some of you can add his name down below. I think that was the book, Power of Now. He's quite big. Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle. Uh, I think he talks about the pain body in one of his books, right? It's like increasing that trauma, the pain body, increasing it, increasing it until uh, we also, in a way, get addicted to it. There are so many people out there, that, and, and I have been one of those people in waves, although generally I don't listen or watch, watch the news very much. Not talking about being uninformed, but um, how much are we addicted, right? Or how much are some people really addicted to um, to news that is horrifying, news that is traumatizing, news that uh, lowers our vibrations, news that somehow really triggers our own pain body. I certainly, we were very, I was very triggered and we were very distressed when there was the earthquake in Turkey and it, it put me a long time. It took me a while to get out of it. So not saying that I don't get affected by what's going on in the world. It's just that, what else are we going to do, women? Are we going to just sit and cry and cry and cry for the pain and the suffering that's going on in the world? Or are we going to do something about it? Your gifts, your magic, your power is going to help us do something about it. And yes, us, it's a collective, it's a co-creation, it's a movement. And the more women, of course, men as well, but I'm speaking to women right now. The more women get on board, especially women architects who can shape and form this earth. can do they can you can do something about it especially you turn on your magical powers turn on those superpowers turn on your intuitive powers oh, shed yourself of this uh, oppressive these oppressive systems that we've put ourselves into that we've, yeah, we've depleted ourselves in. Now it's time to rise. Now it's time to, to wake up. Now it's time to replenish, re-nourish, and work in a way, design and create in a way that not only heals this earth, but heals you too. Right now, women, some of you may be, you know, in good positions at architecture offices and you don't want to quit 
but you're miserable uh, and you're scared that you're not going to make the same amount of money doing spiritual stuff. Some of you may not want to charge money for spiritual stuff. Some of you may think that others, clients, people won't pay money for spiritual stuff. And it's not true. It's not true at all. It's the future. And more and more people are waking up. More and more people are hearing the call to build their sanctuaries, whether just for them and their families or a larger community. Because they have had it with being controlled. They have had it with being tied to a system that doesn't serve them. So when I talk, when I say this, I don't mean that everyone needs to go and build an eco community. You can build the new earth in the middle of downtown Manhattan. It's all about frequency. It's all about the people you gather together. It's all about what you're creating. You could build it in the middle of a suburb, which may be like not the best architectural, you know, project and you know maybe it's a boring thing but maybe it's about building community together right sharing supporting one another or it may be that no i'm going to build a totally off grid community for artists for change agents for transformational leaders maybe a, a, a spa for healing, whatever that project is. It's likely that since you're a, a pioneer, you're probably wanting to birth one yourself as well, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm starting with my home and this property we have, we've got a few tiny houses and uh, I'm excited to explore what's possible with creating some community events here. Um, and starting to bring in, in people into these tiny houses that we'll uh, be renting out uh, uh, to start to weave a community together. And then I've got bigger vision to create uh, some other kind of new earth project, which I won't share right now because it's still in its germination phase. So journal it women write it out bring your visions your dreams out onto your altar if you don't have an altar create one an altar isn't only for praying to jesus or to mother mary or because we don't have altars in the muslim um, um religion or tradition so i'm just using more christian um symbolism or examples here uh, but it's really a, a container of beauty that helps you to manifest your visions. So build your container of beauty. It could be in the corner of your bedroom. It could be in uh, the garden outside on the land. It could be in the center of your house somewhere, somewhere where you can uh, connect with this, with this um, altar, this container of beauty. Write out your visions. That's part of the Sacred Blueprint online course where I get my uh, course participants to, to set an intention aligned with their souls before they start designing their project, before they start fi trying to figure it out, right? Lay all the rooms out. No, first you need to go within and determine what is my soul's purpose? What are my intentions? What are my visions? What brings me the most joy? Where do I see myself in 10 years? Going back to the human as being the architecture of the cosmos, the architecture of the world, the architecture of the earth and beyond. We are such great mysteries. We have the power through the word to manifest life, to manifest 
our dream projects, to manifest our dream business. It's all about how the roof and the walls and the foundations are lined up and are they vibrating at the optimal frequency to for you to attract that. The law of attraction is very popular nowadays. Manifesting, it works. And you've got to be really honest and true to yourself and be open to how the, the package comes to you from the universe. So New Year's is coming soon. I recommend you write a New Year's resolution, write it out. What are you committing to? What are you committing to create? Are you still in victim mode? Are you still blaming others or yourself? Are you still trying to heal yourself? Okay, go to one more healing session, one more healing, do more healing before, before I decide to, you know, before I take the, the leap to quit my job and start uh, a new design practice, or before I take the leap and start really attracting the clients that I want to work with. Or before I start take the leap to, to start speaking my truth, my spiritual truth, write out your intentions, your New Year's intentions, and stop waiting for ex the external world to change. If you don't change your thoughts, if you don't change your imagination, your visions through your imagination. If you don't start healing your body, I mean, I said healing after healing, but you know what I mean? If you don't, if you don't start paying attention and giving that attention to your body, then you're going to end up being stuck in that same um, pattern that you've been stuck in for so many years. I've been there. I've been there. And sometimes do remnants of that pattern creep up and I'm like, oh, that's back again. <laughs> All right, let's do some tapping or yoga or go for a big hike out in nature to to come back to myself rather than remaining in the fear and the contraction and the trauma ah oh, women it's such an honor to serve you really it's such an honor to serve you. And I can't wait for what you're going to co-create with nature. I can't wait. I mean, I'm just amazed by the, the, the creations that are coming out of my clients. And uh, like, wow, I didn't even think that that could be happen. And wow, this is possible. Whoa, this is happening. It's really fun. It's really fun. So I, if you're hesitant, but you're feeling the chills and the buildup and you're too scared, you don't even know how the hell you're going to, you're going to do any of it. I hear you. I hear you and start to change your thoughts in the morning, start to end in the, in the evening set the tone for the day in a different way if you are um, maybe not setting enough time for meditation, uh, setting enough time aside enough time for yourself. I know what it's like to be a mom. I know what it's like to um, to be in space and time situations where you don't have enough time for yourself. So 
wake up a little bit earlier in the morning and write out these intentions and make a prayer, make a, make us do a ritual, a ceremony during the, the winter solstice. No matter where you are in the world. So uh, last week we had a live workshop, live um, online workshop where there was a huge gathering of uh, visionary leaders, land stewards, architects who are eager to, to build the sanctuaries of our future. And I shared uh, some tastes of the sacred blueprint system and um, shared three keys for designing a sanctuary that attracts abundance, vitality, and joy. And, and during the workshop, I announced that we are, my team and I are up-leveling the Sacred Blueprint online course. The course streamed through me, was downloaded when I was on, actually during a lot of my chronic illness. Um, this was before COVID hit, before and after actually. And um, and so I birthed this course, and it's a huge success. And now that I am gaining more experience serving women architects and designers, as well as uh, uh, land stewards and property owners, I'm wanting to refine and up uh, improve certain aspects of the course so that it's easier for you to complete it as well as uh, get more value out of it. Um, another exciting feature that we haven't done before is we're working on creating an online forum as part of the course uh, where you'll be connected to a live streaming platform where I'll be giving uh, live trainings as well. Um, and so to create a more of a community feeling, uh, which I'm feeling called to do. And so this holiday season, I am offering the course for a mega discount, like 60% off normally. Normally it's 1,397 Canadian, and I'm offering it for 555 Canadian until December 22nd, so uh, of 2023. <laughs> so I would love for you to join the course if you uh, are resonating with all that I am sharing and saying. Uh, a lot of my clients have started the course initially before they have partnered to work with me privately or entered any of my group programs. So I do recommend it as a starter. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun and I'll be in there. My team will be in there making improvements and we will also be wanting feedback from you, your suggestions uh, so that we can, we can build this together. We're building it. We're building this movement together. And so it'd be my absolute delight if you joined the course and uh, my assistant will attach the link down below um, in the YouTube video and uh, uh, in all of the, the various platforms we use to broadcast this episode. So I am extending my gratitude to you for subscribing to this podcast, sending you so much love, so much light, and uh, I'm excited to co-create with you in the new year, 2024. For the feng shui designers, practitioners out there, we're in the year of the dragon, right? In 2024. So some big shifts. It's like a 20-year period or something. Share in the comments below if you if you know more information about that. But some of my my clients are feng shui practitioners and uh, they they teach me about that stuff too. So <laughs> the dragon. Oh. Maybe we'll do another episode about dragon energies. I work with dragon energies in the with the spirit of the land, and they are integral, the primal life force. Oof, they they are our allies as well. All right, 
great episode today. It was so great to connect with you and uh, talk to you next time. I'll be off for a while uh, in December, from December 20th to 27th. So I won't be doing uh, uh, an episode next week, but I'll be back in the new year. Ooh, the new year. Can't wait for what's going to unfold in 2024. All right, beauties. Until next time. Bye-bye.